Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to start working on my red um, Roxy Journal of Stitchery Christmas piece and the prompt was birds. So I've completed an owl for the blue bunting but this one I want to um, have a go at reproducing a vintage piece of embroidery. Now the story behind all of this is you will be seeing shortly around the 16th of November um, a short five part series where I use some kits that I purchased from um, Paper Daisy Journals. Now in that I make a journal because I've had these kits for a little while and I just haven't had time to get to them and I just oh, really love them, absolutely love them. I love everything that Kylie makes and she's an Aussie girl so I was really pleased to be able to take time out to play with this kit. Now, these birds appeared within the pages of the kit. Now, if you're interested in the kit, it is um, Paper Daisy Journals on Etsy. And the kit is called Birds and Blossoms. And what you get is these beautiful antique or vintage um, embroideries drifting through uh, one of Kylie's kits. They're just, just gorgeous. And when I was making this series, I made it about a month ago, and it's going to air mid-November-ish. When I was making the journal, I was like, wow, I wonder where these patterns are. Well, I've searched high and low, and I just cannot find the patterns anywhere. And I was chatting to Kylie, and all she knows about them is they were created by a lady um now where did she say overseas somewhere i'll just go to my messages and double check so that i get my story straight but they were sold by the daughter as just pieces of embroidery and the daughter thought that her mother created them from birds in her garden back in the 50s so that sort of gave us a bit of a dead end of was there a pattern out there that I could get my hands on to um, have a go at embroidering these? And it turns out that there doesn't seem to be. A Swedish background is where they're from. So this lady sold the embroideries and Kylie's scanned them and used them in a digital print. So if anyone recognised them as a pattern, please let me know because I would love to own the pattern if it exists out there. Maybe they're just original, beautiful embroideries. What I'm going to attempt to do, this page appears in Kylie's kits. I'm going to attempt to reproduce or come close. Like, I, I don't know. We'll see how we go. Give it a go anyway. Um, these beautiful embroideries. So I have enlarged them. If I want more detail, I can use that as a bit of a guide. Or I do use them as my pattern. I might actually. Now, if I remember rightly from my days of cross stitch, which was a long, long time ago, is you put some lines through your piece. So I'm just looking for a suitable pen that will give us a fine, a fine line. I might even use the friction, friction red pen if I can see it. No, of course it's just not handy. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, so if you ever find a, an old piece of embroidery and you want to actually recreate it, or cross stitch anyway, this is the trick to it. You've got to grid everything up and that gives you a point of which you can start counting because it's counted cross stitch. So what I'm going to do is draw... A line now this appears to be stitched on very fine linen you can see in this one a little bit better how fine it is now to give my eyes some chance of succeeding here I haven't chosen fine linen I've got this piece of um, really soft um, cloth that is counted as in there's lots of little squares there and they are fairly fine so i'm hoping this will give me a nice finish so what i'm going to do now that i've squared my pattern up and found the center of the image i'm going to do the same 
with with my piece with some black thread so I just need one one of those and if I do a a rough line through the middle it should work I'll give it a go I think the stitches going up to that tail worst case is one two three four five six seven start again one two three four five six seven 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, say 23. So if we go through here, I might zoom in. Let's just do a quick little count just to know where our little tail, let's say if it goes there. So 23, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So the top of his tail would be there. Okay, so he's only going to be a little itty bitty guy. If you wanted your image to be bigger, by all means... Um, you know, grab some bigger cloth with bigger holes in it. That's how you enlarge. So we'll we'll try him. I can always do him again if I find that we need him a little bit bigger. But I think it'll be all right because I'd rather have more birds on my... I might just make sure I've got that thread in the center I don't want to make it hard on myself by not knowing exactly the center I use this cloth for some Beatrix Potter embroideries a long long time ago and I've since cut them out because they were in the cupboard and I cut them out because I thought they're never ever going to be seen if they're in the cover. And I used them on a embroidery piece. So I know that this product is beautiful to work with. This is going to be a challenge to actually count because the old eyes ain't what they used to be. So... Hopefully I can handle this. It's very fine, but I think I'll be all right. I'll give it a go. Then what I'm hoping to do is then remove this piece out of this cloth and work it into a slow stitch piece for this prompt. So it'll take me a little while to pull this one together, but that's all good. It would be nice to have a play with some cross stitch again and then break it down into the embroidery style that we're working on now with the Journal of Stitchery. I hunted everywhere for a bird that was already embroidered in a vintage doily, but I just couldn't find anything. And then I remembered that when I was doing the series for um, the paper, um, the journal series, I make, I make a comment in the series that wouldn't these be great to reproduce? So I thought, well, now's our chance. I'm hoping this ring will help me. I haven't had an embroidery hoop in my hands for so long. This is a trip down memory lane. That's just to help me hold it because cross stitch is very fine work. Well, it's not as fine as some things out there like petty point and things like that. And this fabric is very soft and 
will move a lot. Let's just get that on at least. So, counted cross stitch. You're about to see why it's called that. So, if you had like a cross stitch that you just loved and you've been using it in your journals and you're down to your last few pieces, this is a fantastic way of, um, you know, continuing to use it, reproduce it. Now, let's have a look at threads. Now, it's the red book, so we're going to need a red bird. And I really like the colours that are in some of these guys, the pinks and reds. So we'll have a bit of a play with colour as we go. But let's, let's do his underbelly. Let's work on his tummy. And we might, might use a, a, a grey tone. Do I have a grey? Yeah. Do we give him a dirty grey belly or a silvery grey? I'm thinking a silvery grey tummy. Okay. Let's have a go. Now I think I'll use two strands. He's only little, so we don't want to overpower him with the thickness of the thread. So let's have a go at two. Now, if I remember rightly, you use a blunt end, a blunt tip needle, which of course I don't have here, or do I? Not of any great length, and I like a long needle. So we're going to use a pointy, pointy one. But I, I believe from memory you should use a blunt edge so that it just slips between the little holes. So, yeah, we'll see how we go. All right, now the cross, let's put his tummy right on that line. Technically, it's not, but that's only because I've drawn it so that it's slightly under. And to the right, one, two, three, four, five stitches. So let's, I might leave a gap, then I'm not right on that. I'm going to start in the middle. Oh, I'm going to need a blunt needle. You can see I'm splitting it as I go. So, oops. Good start. Not, not big enough. Might remove my glasses so I get better vision close up. Okay. Little half stitch. And I'm going to jump along to the next hole and do another half stitch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my thread down. I know I put a knot in it, but that's just, you know, old habits, I think. I'm going to lay that thread down and try and catch it in my stitching behind as I go. And we need five, so that's two. Three. Four and five. So all I've done is the half stitch. I definitely need a blunt needle. Maybe if this was that traditional hardcore starched Ada cloth, it might work a little easier. So definitely five, yes. And we've got our five stitches. So now I'm going to come back and complete the stitch. One, I think that this bird is going to be too small. 
I will finish him on this because I'll use him on something. But I think I could probably go up. I can't remember the the grading of that Ada cloth, whether it's number eight, number 12, number 16. I just can't remember. Oh, this is so 80s. So there's my five little cross stitches. Okay. Now, let's have a look at our pattern. We're going to stay in the same colour. And we're going to do one, two, three, four on the other side of it. And is there a half stitch? No. Doesn't look like she's used many half stitches. Half stitches are sort of when you get to a spot where you want to curve your piece. Now we've got to remember which way we're, we're going. We're going from the top left to the bottom right first. If you don't follow that sort of grain, your piece will look like it's got um, a grain in it and you want it to look, f you know, all the one way. How many did I say we were doing? Goodness me. This is why I don't do cross stitch anymore. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's two. I'm having flashbacks of working a whole area and then realizing that I'd counted wrong. I must dig out some old pieces that I've done. I'm sure they're still in the cupboard. I'm gonna have to work them into something. Like literally they're in the cupboard. I should get them out, either get them framed or work them into something. How many have we done? Let's bring that up. One, two, three, four, five, one more. I can't believe I did Peter Rabbit. Oh my goodness me. Three, four. This bird is going to be tiny. Too tiny, I'm sorry. I'm going to stop what I'm doing because this is too tiny. But uh, it'll give you a good idea of how the sizing of your cross stitch affects your piece. So when reproducing without a pattern, you really got to sort of see how you go. So that's his underbelly. Now his body does get a little wider, but he is literally going to be that big with the tiny little tail. So he's gonna be no wider than really my thumb. So, all right, let's just um, cool our heels for a moment. What I will do is show you a piece stitched on that. Now this is my Peter Rabbit I did many, many years ago. That's him there on that cloth. So it does work up beautifully. There's a little bird sitting on the shovel. But um, for the purposes of what I'm doing, that is going to be a little bit too much work. So behind me, I have a drawer full of random fabrics. And I'm sure there's some Ada cloth in there. Just having a little look. Gosh, someone, you could embroider it onto linen, but oh my goodness. Not for this little black duck. I've seen it um, cross stitch done on Osmoberg as well. Oh, not for me. I uh, just can't see it. Well, that was very well prepared. I'm just going to go to another cupboard. One moment, guys. As Gail would say, talk amongst yourselves. Here 
Here we go. Here we go. I knew I had some scraps. I'm sure I have more elsewhere. This is marginally bigger. And I think, I think this will be better. Okay, let's have another go at this. Yep. This is a lot firmer. This is probably more traditional um, cloth used for this technique. So let's get it into our hoop. Nice and taut. We'll have another go. I might move in. Now that I've got a bit of a feel for what her size is going to be, I might actually make my cross a little higher and maybe I can get a second one on the piece. We'll see how we go. We're just getting ourselves organised here again. Okay. Need a little bit more tension on that. So we might just might just go a little bit off center. I'm getting. And before we get going, let's find a needle that's got a rounded end on it. I know it'll be a lot quicker if I can find something that's more of a tapestry needle with a blunt. Maybe I don't have one. I haven't done this type of work for so long. So whether there's one in here that will do, the, yeah, here we go. What about that guy? Has he got a blunt end? No. He does, but boy, they're like crowbars. I'll try it with this, but it's nearly a little bit too thick. Gee, I'm organized, aren't I? We'll give it a go. I can always head to the shops and purchase a, um, a proper needle for this. I've got a, another stash of needles somewhere. Like that, he, that eye, I think, is going to be too big to go through. Oh, gee, I'm butchering this. The purists out there. Have you ever watched Floss Tube? That's where they all showcase the work they've been working on and patterns that they're going to start. And oh my goodness, the work. That's all right. So now I'm just going to pick my line. And get my cross. Yeah, much better with blunter needle. Fancy that. Okay, let's just run it right through because if I'm tricky, I might be able to do a second cross line. For a second bird but let's just not get ahead of ourselves here okay let's just bring that through and just trim that off so who still does cross stitch? Who's working on a piece out there? Hats off to you. A lot of work. 
good eyesight needed. Let's just pick a line, say, here. He still won't be real big, but that's that's fine by me. Because our pieces that we're working on in our journals, they aren't exactly big. Okay. I hope that was on camera, I bet it wasn't. I do apologize. So he's gonna be worked up in that top corner a little. And then if it goes to plan and we want another bird, we could potentially bring one in over here, but we'll see how we go. Okay, where's our thread? Let's get ourselves. I'm gonna try it still with two. Because by the time you cross it over on itself, it does get quite thick pretty quick. So I think two will be fine. All right. So who remembers what we had to do? Five and six? Well, let's, let's count six across. One, two, three, four, five, six. And start over here, two, four, six, yep, okay. And we were one line above. So this time we're gonna start in the bottom corner. As long as where we start, we stay that way. So one, two, three, can already see they're going to be bigger, which is great. Four. Five. I guess if this becomes something that piques your interest, go on YouTube it because there'll be so many tips and tricks to it that I have forgotten. So I'd highly recommend that if it is something you would like to explore or you have a pattern in the cupboard that you've just never got around to, we'll pull it out because there's a chance of doing it. Three, no, two. We're on the other side now. This is the third stitch. Okay, so let's have a look. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, surely I can complete this. This doesn't seem like it's gonna to be too crazy. So now I'm going back. I guess if you don't see this video, well then you'll never know that this bird thing, oh, there's a needle in that eight o'clock. That's a sharp one. I can hear a white cockatoo outside my window. They roost on the in the trees one block next to us. So morning and night they fly in and fly out wherever they're heading to get up to mischief. But they then come back on sunset and they squawk and carry on like crazy. I think it's about six in this little flock. And they're in the trees next door. So they're heading out for the day. Okay. That's looking good. 
and our first row is complete. I'm happier with this size, to be honest. I'm happier working with this cloth. It's nice and rigid in my hands. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, what are we gonna do for the next row? So we, we jump across two and then how do we? I think I need to light this one needs to be re-photocopied because the background is too similar to the stitches. So it's not easy on myself here. Yeah, there's two out by themselves, then we come right through. Gosh, it's hard to see. I don't even think. Oh my goodness. I'm just going to put a line on this pattern as well. Because I think this one will be easier, to be honest. And I think I've already jiggered up my lines. Oh my goodness me. Maybe I should have done this on a computer first. Where did I do my second line? Just to the left of that foot through there. So there's some little stitches below. So yeah, that's it. Two, four, five, two, four, six. So the next row is one stitch above, right through to the center line. Okay, we're back on track. And what I'll do is I will photocopy this paler so that we can see. So what do we say? One stitch across. It's actually two rows of it. So we're going to come one stitch higher and then go all the way across. Now, Another thing you can do when you've got a big area that you you know is true to be correct, you can go ahead and do your half stitch in a bigger area and then come back when you're confident that it's correct and complete, complete the cross, which I think is what I'm going to do here because we're going to whiz across here. to the center, one stitch longer than the previous row. And then we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no, seven. So two stitches past the previous row. Two. Once you get that first row down, it's not only counting, but it's more of a visual thing as well. So it becomes, if anything, a little bit easier. There is a second row, uh, another row below where we started, I believe, but the photocopy has sort of disguised it. And then I've put my big fat pen over the top of it, but I believe there's a second row. Well, a, a row further down, but we can always come back and do that. It's not a big thing. So we're going two past that point. Now what's the row above it do? One row, 
one point one cross past it again so we're going to come out we're jumping up a row and we're now coming back to level up over here with this other row so that's pretty good what I'm thinking I might do is actually mark out this entire gray tummy area of his and then once I'm happy that it's in the right spot and my count is right I'll then come back down crossing it with the final stitch then I'll drop down here and pop those few stitches in under his tummy that I've missed due to my big thick pen I used I'll tell you if you want more precision more professionalism in the cross stitch world this is not for you this might spark an interest but then I'd go and learn it properly from some of the experts I haven't done this since the 80s and I had big charts that you could use to work your piece okay coming back along gosh you could even just do your whole bird just in the one stitch and not do the cross it's pretty in itself okay there's our two rows done finishing at the same point let's have a little look at our birdie okay so that's all there is we then go back to that center line with two little stitches so I'm just going to work back to there <clears throat> may as well see we're passing it's probably a major no-no but anyway I'm gonna put those few little crosses in as we're on our way back and then we're gonna go up one row and put in two stitches because that's all there is okay we're at that point where we're going to go up up a row where's that one got a loose stitch gosh this would never go into a show got a knot oh goodness me look at that I knew something was going on there that would have been very disappointing to find okay so back on track so we got two stitches up here right on that center point line okay then what have we got to do we're going all the way along and I believe we're going one stitch past again so his tush is getting quite elongated out that side okay coming along still mapping it out we'll call one stroke of the cross mapping it out it's not a term they use I'm sure but that's what I'm going to use so we're going to just map out his little bottom here in this gray thread it's going to be fun working out all the colors because usually they give you a um a plan a, a color chart and you go and purchase all your flosses that you need to complete it according to their recommendations so to do it from scratch so it's one stitch out it nearly looks like a half stitch to be honest now I'm going to change needles to do a half stitch because I need that point to slice through the center of our 
X space. So I'm going to do a half up to that top corner, but then I'm going to come and complete the X by coming only into the center of that box. It's just a it helps give that shape to the little bird's bottom, I believe. Now, I might as well catch the last row, which is a full X right above. And there's one, two, three, four, five. So let's change needles back to our big blunt boy here. And we need five, which doesn't quite get us to that center line because then they, it changes color. Okay, two, three, so this is number four. And if our math is right, the next color needs four crosses. So we're there at our fifth now, so the next is two blue and two dark blue which will probably make red i think so we should have four holes left one two three four yay we did it so now that i've finished mapping out the gray i'm just going to use up my thread and come back over all that worked space and finish off the gray. Can you see his little tush? My thread's getting small. So that's my plan, to reproduce these little guys and hopefully have some elements that I can then use in my red panel. Now this red panel is going to have to roll over a few weeks, I think, because I'm just, the owl took so long. There's a lot of work in that little owl. So it's all good. I'm sure the next prompts will be well and truly out by the time I get myself organized with this guy, but that's okay. No rush. Take our time and enjoy these prompts. Okay, I'm going to finish that thread off because it's getting a little bit, a little bit hard on my hands there, a bit short. I might, what have we got? We've got about 15 minutes left. Let's have a look at some colours and see what we can do for his colors. Now, if we do this properly, I'm gonna use two needles. I might use this big piece of paper. Oh, no. Finding actually the small one best to use. Let's get a pen. So the yellow on our little bird, let's get this out of the way. The yellow is going to be gray and I've used 318. Now it then has a darker yellow, so we'll call that orange and it's a dark gray needed for that. So let's choose a dark gray. How dark do we want to go? How, how dark into his, I think I'll keep it a little, and we might make it a dirty gray. So then it's got a bit of warmth to him. Six, four, six. So that'll cover his little bottom. Now, the bird himself, I can see a dark blue 
I can see a mid blue. And that's his wings and tails, then a pale blue. Then his back is two different bluey greens. So his back, we'll call that um, teal and teal. So we'll do a dark, dark teal. Where's my rubber? I haven't given myself enough room. Teal and teal. And we've got one as dark and one as a mid teal. That's his back. And then there's this little pale, pale colour through the centre. Okay, so now we've sort of got a bit of a feel for how he is going to go. Let's get the dark colour sorted. And I'm going to go with a real good red. Do I do more of a burnt burgundy or this red? I think I'll go fresher than that one. But we might sneak into the plums a little bit here. Mm, I don't know. We could do that. Or we stay in the brighter reds. Number is that guy 498 498 so the same same what's that one so it's ever so slightly different what are these guys here 309 Sort of tending towards, oh, you can't even see. I'm sort of tending towards this color combination. And then maybe we go paler on his back. So I'm gonna write them down as the dark blue will be two, two, one. The mid blue, let's get that out. The mid blue will be 372. And 223 will be the pale blue. Yeah. Okay, so now his back, is that pale blue? Is there only two blues? Hmm. I'm thinking that that pale color doesn't actually exist. There's only two blues there. So this little guy could be part of the back, but it might be too. Yeah, that's better. The pale around his face and around his wing there is going to be 224. So it blends into the wing. Now his back needs to be a different sort of tone again. So do we go more of a purpley pink? Like something like that. That would be pretty. And then maybe a darker. These are the two teal colours. Um, maybe that one there might be enough of a contrast. Yeah. So it's going to be very plummy. 
All right, so the, the dark teal on the edge of him will be this guy, which is 3726. And this guy will be across his back. So there's our, our colours there. I wish I had more reds to make him a little bit more Christmassy, but I don't. I'd have to bring in maybe some of these, but I don't have the transitioning colours like I do with the pinks. So I think we'll keep him in those pink tones. It won't matter. It'll, it'll all tie together in the end. Okay, now we picked a dark gray for his, under his tail and then that's his body. So there's our colors, I believe. <clears throat> so I can pop those away. Oh, there's some more reds over there. See, they get real, real burgundy. I think what's worrying me is this plummy colour, but I'm not going to overthink it, for goodness sakes. <clears throat> There's multiple birds. We can always play with the colours a little bit more, um, you know, as we go. So what we might do, we've got a few minutes, is I'm going to get this dark, this dark grey. Let's put this on the card here so that I don't lose it because I'll need that to finish the little X's. Let's stitch in or mark in his little grey bottom. That's three. Okay. Now Let's have a little look at <clears throat> how the pattern takes us. Now we've got one little stitch on the end of the gray, then we go up and do three. So let's do that. Got one little stitch on the end of that gray. And then we come I'll back along the top three little stitches. One, two, three. Okay, so that's that marked out. Let's have a look at our pattern again. Then we've got, we step in. I think there's a half stitch there too. One, two, three little stitches. But, no, how many stitches? Two. Two little stitches finishing up on the end. The trick to this, I believe, is just take your time. Double check, because you don't want to have to unpick it. The next row above that is again two stitches, but it's not exactly lined up over those two. So we've got to come across an extra stitch out because he's getting the shape of his tail feather there, or his, his bottom is curved. There probably needs to be a few little half stitches there, but the photocopy is not helping me. And then there's one little stitch up in the air next row by itself there we go so now we can work our way back down i can always come in with some little half stitches if it looks like he's not getting that nice curved shape if he needs it we can you know pop a little stitch in but that's at least the dark What fun. You just never know where the 
Journal of Stitchery journey is going to take you because there's so many stitches out there in that world that can be used in your work. So to have something that is so formal like cross stitch and the design is so controlled, your threads, your, your pattern, merging or clashing in or crashing in with the stitchery world is really cool. I'm going to change my needle now because I'm going to need the point of it to finish that off. So that's his little dark tail. Happy with the grey. It's a nice a dirty grey. It's not uh, a cold icy grey. And those pinks have got that tone about them as well. So I think it, I think he will look like he's got the right color tone to him and once I know the height of him and how he works up I'll be able to then plan the next bird because I'd sort of like them in a branch okay so that gray doesn't appear again so I'm going to just put it to one side I won't put him away because we might end up doing a similar color bird and if he's got the same like this little blue bird here. There's that dark grey again, that orange. Okay. Now let's let's pick up that grey thread and finish off what we had done before. Before I go and start the pinks. So I'm going to stop the video now and let you all go. I'll keep playing with these birds and then I'll be back to show you my progress in the next video. And I guess we can start planning the next bird and sort of see how we go. But we'll do a few more stitches. We've got a few more minutes we can hang out. The trick is not to miss any half stitches. When you do map it out, you've got to make sure you catch them all. So I'm just going to work my way along, ensuring that I get all of these little stitches squared away. So if you did want this inspirational embroidery, pop over to Kylie's Etsy store. I'll pop a link below so that you can buy the kit. And I can assure you the kit is gorgeous anyway. And then in amongst it are these little birds, which are just beautiful. So if you did want to try and reproduce your own version of them, a little bit of fun. Okay, yeah, I think this is going to be a lovely size. He's going to be as sweet as anything. By the time his little tail comes up here. So that's taken an hour, give or take a bit of prep, an hour to do, not even a postage stamp. Oh, goodness me. So next time you're at a a craft fair or something like that or a, a local show and you see some cross stitch there that's all framed up beautifully presented you can now really appreciate the hours and hours that goes into this hats off to you i'll try and dig out some pieces that i did years ago my friend mary ann did a wedding piece for herself when they were married, that's when we were doing this. So it's probably 30 years ago now. And it was the bride and in the image with a beautiful train. And I believe there was like little crystals through it as well. So there's a little bit of beading. And then she had it framed and it's got the date of their wedding. Just stunning. It's a beautiful piece. Back in the day. When we were cross-stitching, you go through phases, don't you? 
I think I, I did a piano with a pink rose lying on the keys. It wasn't the whole piano, it was just the black and white keys. And it was a bit abstract with this pink rose lying, lying across the keys. And I framed that and gave it to my mother-in-law and she's got it sitting on her piano. I think I've got them all. There we go. So change my needle to a sharp one just for ease of knotting off. And we won't look at the back. It's very messy. I would not win any shows. But that's okay. It doesn't matter. We're just mucking around. Okay. There we go, guys. We'll save that little morsel of thread. Gosh, I've had these threads for so long. If you think that's a lot of threads, it's because we were doing this type of work and you'd start a pattern and it'd all be different threads, so you'd have to get more. So it's taken me years to get to that stage. That was back when threads were 55 cents to buy. Now they're not that anymore. So every little morsel is precious. There we go. There's his little tush. Can you see the bird coming? It's a bit of a stretch. Actually, I do need to put those few little stitches down below. I might as well do that before I forget because my thick pen has actually drawn over them and they're just below there. So anyway, we'll do that before I forget completely. All right, everyone. I will leave you all in peace. Thanks for joining me. Something a little bit different, a bit of a challenge, and we'll see how this all goes. Bye for now.